Welcome to Tuesday, November 12th, 2019, regular selectmen's meeting. Here's all of the selectmen are present, and town manager, and town clerk, as uh, town assessor, as town finance director, and Christy Rabeska from for our MS4 project. So, is uh, please stand with me and salute the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The uh, first order is the approval of the October 22nd meeting minutes. I approve... Uh, I move that we approve the minutes as presented. I'll second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. There's a public comment. Is uh, we have no public here, so as I will uh, close the public comment. Um, we have no public hearing today. Is uh, reports of committees. Is I do not believe BCTV has a report. Um, Envision Berwick is uh, we have a meeting of the Comprehensive Plan Committee this Thursday. As I would imagine that at our next meeting we'll have a report for that. I have one thing. Yep. Uh, Historical Society Berwick is, uh, has an annual meeting November 20th. It's going to be held here in the Slickman's room and it's going to be a movie. which will mm -hmm. include quite a bit of history and photographs and all kinds of stuff. So if people are interested, it will be great to see. Uh, and BCTV did all the editing and production of that. <coughs> and also on uh, the 30th, on Saturday, uh, at St. Andrew's Day Scottish Concert Series. It'll be from 2 to 4 at the First Parish Federated Church, and all funds will benefit the Berwick Historical Society, North Berwick Historical Society, and the Old Berwick Historical Society. So, um, that's great music. and entertainment so take advantage good stuff thank you uh, no department reports none is uh, we have a presentation from Chris Basker about the MS4 project storm the stormwater projects there you go and we're gonna Blink. if you if you want to if you want to keep it in uh, if you want to for the TV we should probably do that yeah I guess, because yeah, I did broadcast it. Yeah. I'll move out of the way <laughs> And I know how to do it. Can they be all right? I'll sit up there. Yeah, I think I've got to move too. <laughs> you have your handouts too. If you. Yeah. Well, uh, Noah, can you, can you just kill those lights? Yep. Can you get by? Yep. Goodbye. We'll okay. keep this short and sweet. I see you have a Ed. very long Ed. agenda for tonight. Right there. So my name is Christy Robaska. I'm an environmental engineer. I work for myself. My company is Integrated Environmental Engineering, Inc. And I'm here to provide the stormwater permit update for you. This uh, permit is called uh, the general permit for stormwater discharges from municipal separate storm sewer systems. And the town has been regulated uh, for these separated stormwater discharges since 2003 when this program hit the state of Maine. And the program is comprehensive. This slide looks a little complicated, but I'm going to run you through it. We start over in the upper right, and the purpose of this slide is to show you the six different elements that the general permit covers, all of the activities that are required by town staff. And I, I am an advisor and a consultant when they are, have to do things that they don't understand, maybe are a little too technical or um, too detail-oriented, or as they change, um, I just provide the staff with advice. So the first um, item that the staff uh, in town are required to, to do under this general permit, this Clean Water Act permit, we call it an MCM1, Minimum Control Measure. Number one, it's the public education uh, component and it's, it kind of combines with MCM2, Minimum Control Measure 2, public participation. So 
Stormwater discharges are um, basically when it rains, all the, all the water goes into these uh, storm drains like you see in the second circle there for MCM2. And then basically here in the town of Berwick, for the most part, I'd say 90% of the stormwater ends up in the Salmon Falls River. So anything that is on the ground surface ends up in the Salmon Falls River, whether it's dirt, cigarette butts, um, people dumping their coffee out on the streets, all that stuff. So uh, people talk about stormwater pollution. It's uh, to a water body, it's death by a thousand cuts. So the stormwater permit requires that public education be done so that people understand that what they're doing, even on their own property or out in public, infrastructure in the roadways can affect the stormwater. So we have to do some public education. The programs that we've focused on for the past few years have been really to try to get people to understand that they don't always need to fertilize um, their lawns and um, apply pesticides, you know, kind of broad, broad band that you can do spot controls for pesticides. And so we offer a lot of workshops around that. Um, there was just one last month through the Noble um, pu uh, uh, Public Education, Adult Public Ed. So the public, ed, I, I really work with the planning department for the most part on those public education programs, and, and most of that work comes out of, comes out of, out of me. Um, the third minimum control measure for stormwater discharges, the, the area where the town is regulated, is it's called illicit discharge detection and elimination. And it's a, a kind of a mouthful, but basically the town, when I started working for the town in 2002, um, there were the, no maps of the storm drain system. There were stacks of plans in the back offices and nobody knew where it was. And since then, we've worked with Southern Maine Planning and Development Commission. The, the genesis of the storm drain mapping has advanced quite a bit and now basically uh, James Bellissimo mm -hmm. goes around with a small iPad. He has the entire system on his iPad and he can do electronic inspections of the outfalls. And um, this year, the Public Works Department, I also work with the Public Works Department on that, they um, did inspections on all the catch basins. And what they're inspecting for are maintenance considerations, making sure that there's not going to be a failure of the storm drain system and maybe a sinkhole that would develop. Um, but they're also looking for what are illicit discharges. They're looking for things that people might have dumped in or uh, evidence of connections from houses, which can be quite difficult to to find, like if somebody has a washing machine that's um, connected into the storm drain system accidentally, it, it might take a couple years for somebody to find that because it, it's, a, it's an intermittent thing. It only happens for you know five minutes at a time out of a you know 365 day a year <coughs> days a year. So we have to do all these inspections. So James does the outfall inspections. Public Works does the catch basin inspections and then the catch basins get cleaned out so that the sediment that's in their sumps doesn't end up out in the river. So I work with them pretty closely on MCM3. And you know, James and the crew are always out there. They're changing the infrastructure, they're changing culverts, they're adding ditches, they're doing ditching. So uh, they, uh, basically James and the Public Works Department, they have the ability to update the system like on the fly on the iPad, which is very nice for them. Um, Moving around clockwise around the circle, we get to MCMs four and five, minimum control measures four and five. They're construction runoff control and post-construction runoff control, and they work pretty much with the planning and code people for that. We just had a train, Jen was just trained um, last month in um, all of the requirements for her. She has some very specific forms that she has to use to go out and do sediment and erosion control inspections um, development sites to make sure the contractors are doing sediment erosion control like they should be. And then after a site has been developed, there are a few triggers and James works closely with the planning board to, um, to make sure that um, the infrastructure that's being installed on a piece of private property is going to be maintained in the long term. So we call it post-construction runoff control. I mean, as you guys know, like um, with the new fire department, and um, the capital project that will be going in down at the park. The stormwater systems that are being installed now, they're much more sophisticated. They actually treat for water quality. Those are state requirements. And so those really have to be maintained in order to continue to be effective. Um, so post-construction runoff control 
ensures that private entities that are installing those um, stormwater treatment systems make sure that they're actually maintaining those in the long term. So we have a whole program that we work, um, that James and I work out on that. And the last minimum control measure is, is the most intensive for public works. It's called pollution prevention and good housekeeping. And um, you know, that's a, basically a picture of a catch basin there. And, um, and you'll see the sediment in the bottom of the sump, and maybe there's some garbage in the top. And I'm so really sorry, but the microphone's over here. And oh. Back to it, so it's not working. I'm sorry. I'll sit down. So this, uh, maybe she'll give me a thumbs. I can't see her. It's a mirror. <laughs> it's a mirror. She's watching us. Um, so this last one is um, all of the work that um, Public Works has to do. The catch basin cleaning is required to be conducted um, annually. Um, the suites, the suites, the streets need to be swept. Um, the Public Works facility has its own special plan to make sure that it um, doesn't cause or contribute to any uh, pollution to the Salmon Falls River, the runoff from the Public Works facility. Um, so it's a, it's a very broad uh, category, basically making sure that the town, however you guys are doing your operations, you're doing them in a manner that you won't pollute stormwater, that the town won't pollute stormwater. Very, very broad-based, and it just impacts all the different um, aspects of municipal operations. So all of this, this is a Clean Water Act permit, and the goal of the Clean Water Act is fishable and swimmable waters. And um, I think last time I was here, people asked me about, well, how, how is the water quality in, in Berwick? And so I, um, the, the state of Maine reviews water quality officially, and they, they publish an official report every two years. Um, and the most recent report that's available is the 2016 report. The 2018 report hasn't been finalized yet. But basically, most of the water in the town of Berwick is meeting its water quality classification, which is really good. Um, as soon as a water body is not meeting its classification, they call it impaired. And then the, the work to get that water back to its fishable and swimmable standards is extremely expensive. The activities that have to take place in order to return a water to its fishable, swimmable standards is pretty pretty significant so maintenance of water quality in good condition is very important and the um, installation of these stormwater structures to treat water quality before it hits the water body is one of the best ways that you can do that so the salmon falls river you'll see does have two specific impairments in particular it does have a new impairment for bacteria that's uh, E. coli only, and that is mostly from the wastewater treatment plants that discharge into it. The other uh, pollutants that are in the Salmon Falls River that cause it to be impaired are called legacy pollutants, and those are basically from the old paper mills that used to discharge well before the Clean Water Act. A lot of those legacy pollutants are held up in the sediments, and so as long as the sediments aren't disturbed, then um, the water is in better condition. And so the, for the legacy pollutants, the um, fish advisories, the fish intakes, are uh, mostly below uh, the town of Berwick, not, the, not above where your water, clean water intake is. So Why is there a bacteria problem or E. coli problem in the river? I'm assuming that the, the wastewater discharge, should, that should be coming out of there clean. They're chlorinated. In death. After it's the dead. fact, yeah. So other, so the, I do, I did say here this may also be from stormwater, but one of the things that the main DEP does not do is they don't specify precisely why there's a bacteria issue. They oh. leave that up to the locals to figure out. So bacteria can come from pet waste. It can come from naturally occurring sources too. Um, and so they have not yet determined that it's from human source. So the work that we do under the stormwater program to make sure we don't have any cross connections discharging okay. that that stuff's all really good the um the only other water that even has a yellow flag on it is adams brook so i have a little picture of it there you'll see it's actually um 
down uh, south on the border with uh, South Berwick, um, and it's right there on route where Route 4 comes in. And most of that area is agricultural, and um, they basically they're saying that the benthic organisms or the bugs that live in the bottom of Adams Brook um, are not diverse enough. And um, that can be most, lots of times that happens from sedimentation. Um, if there's a little too much erosion going into the brook, then it will smother the bottom organisms. And the only kinds of organisms that can survive are the ones that are really modal, you know, that can climb back out of the dirt again. So um, you can't get like the mayflies. They can't do that. Um, some of the better bugs that things need. So that, that's why that's not mis meeting its fishable swimmable standards. But it's a pretty small, Adams Brook is a pretty small brook. And, um, and I think that'll be a pretty, a pretty easy fix. But for the most part, Berwick waters are meeting their classifications. And I think it's, it's a good thing. Hmm. So I um, have worked on this permit for quite a while. I've worked for, for this community and several other communities down here in uh, Southern Maine. And, um, and this permit is supposed to be a five-year permit, but we have run into a couple of snags. You've probably heard me talk about this before. A couple of snags in getting the next permit issued. And so instead of ending at permit year five and reissuing in 2018 the way the main DEP should have, we've had an extension. And that's because some of the uh, not-for-profit environmental organizations have had significant issues with the way the permit was written. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so we have had, we've been having discussions with them for almost 18 months now to try to get some of these issues resolved. And the biggest one is over impaired waters, which actually doesn't affect the town as much as it does the Portland area communities, the Bangor area communities, and then Lewiston, Auburn, Sabattis. They have many more impaired waters. And the costs that they're going to be looking at to correct those impairments under this permit are significant and it's the other reason that i am stressing that it's very important to maintain good water quality so that's been one of the issues we've been discussing how to address that um, and get that done in a manner that's affordable to municipalities who are you discussing this with i'm just I'm the two organizations are friends one is friends of casco bay no but who who the, the permitting organization that's the state talking about right and the main department of environmental protection okay. yeah so they're writing the language and they have had a stakeholder process which they do sometimes for controversial rules and regulations that are going out and they will issue a preliminary draft to interested parties mm -hmm. so friends of casco bay got a copy conservation law foundation and then all the permittees all the municipalities that are regulated got copies okay so we commented, they commented, we commented, they commented. And they're still commenting. And we're still commenting. Gotcha. Yes, and we're still trying to work that out. Um, and the other issue is illicit discharge work. So there are some new requirements that are going <coughs> to be uh, coming, and um, uh, Carl James is actually coming to a training that I'm doing on Thursday to show him what those new requirements are going to look like, even though we won't have to do them for about a year or so, because we need to start working that into the budget, and he, he just needs to get his head wrapped around that before he has to do that work. So he's going to come to that training. It's going to take him more time to do his outfall inspections, and there will be some moderate costs, uh, probably $500 to $1,000 worth of um, analytical costs and equipment that we'll have to purchase so that he has a, like a stormwater sampling kit available to him. <clears throat> um, so I am putting this out there. It's, I think it's really important to think about the, the stormwater, the cost of uh, keeping stormwater clean and, um, and so I really have divided it up into three categories for you. The annual staff time um, is very difficult to assess because a lot of the things like street sweeping, you would be doing that anyway. So I never know whether to include that in the cost of the stormwater permit or not. Um, because it would get done anyway, but if you ran into a budget snafu and decided you didn't want to do your street sweeping one year, that would become a permit violation. Other unregulated communities can make that decision but you guys cannot. Like you have to do street sweeping, you have to do the catch basin cleaning, you have to do the inspections. It would be permit violation if you didn't do it. So 
the annual staff time, I've tried to estimate here, James um, only has a few outfalls to inspect. It typically takes him a day or so to do it and then um, another uh, few hours to answer all my questions about his inspections <laughs> and do a little follow-up. And then it, it'll take a little bit more time next uh, when he has to do his monitoring, um, his additional monitoring under the new permit. The catch basin inspections, I estimate that Carly and the crew between inspections and cleaning, maybe 80 to 120 hours of staff time. The public works facility, they have inspections that they have to do and follow up. That's probably 80 hours worth of work. The planning and code, all that development stuff that we talked about, the construction inspections, post-construction, just kind of keeping track of things. Um, I'd say maybe 80 to 100 hours, and these are per year that they um, have to spend this time. And then I think other general time, um, the town of Berwick shares my services with four other communities and it provides the staff a way to see you know what's going on in the other towns and do they want to do that too so um james comes to meetings sometimes steve will come to a meeting if james can't carly comes uh, sometimes a public works administrative assistant there's training they all have to be trained so that adds quite a bit of time take them out for a couple of hours to do a training for them on stormwater so the staff time does start to add up Um, and then when the new fire station infrastructure goes in, that treatment infrastructure, we'll have to make some decisions about who's going to do the monitoring for that. You guys could hire a third-party inspector. You could have someone from uh, fire or police do it, which I think would be a great idea. Um, or you could have somebody from Robert Pershey's crew do it, um, the, the inspections. So we're going to have to write a new operation and maintenance manual for that. And um, so we'll have some discussions with Steve and and fire department about that one and Robert when they when that comes to fruition uh, and same with the park if there's a stormwater I think you're gonna put a stormwater quality treatment system in over at the park somebody will have to do maintenance on that too, uh, monitoring inspections so consulting fees these are my fees um, they have increased since 2003 um, and they do decrease with staff continuity and you guys have had some great staff here my goal is always to get them to do more work and me to do less and then you pay me less and that is the way it works I'm an hourly fee and um, some of this money's contingency in case you run into an illicit discharge and you need some help figuring that out or um, some of the other costs are also capital costs for n the new infrastructure and right now you're looking at a design project you have a little over sixty thousand dollars budgeted for the design for this year and almost equal amount for next year to finish out that design over at the salmon falls park and then you'll have um, a construction project to do and that it's it's always good to do the stormwater infrastructure treatment uh, systems when you're doing your road reconstruction so um, all of that 113,000 isn't really f just for stormwater it's also for the road redesign and you know everything that goes along with that so again it's a little tough to carve out but that's that 113 is just design cost no construction cost that's right? correct but that's for the whole full road reconstruction all the way up molten So while those num might seem like some big numbers, um, those are um, those are numbers that you're actually think of them as an investment in clean water, um, with the treatment systems and the and the other work that you're doing. And so for I thought it would be a good reference for you. Uh, it's always nice to see what your infrastructure looks like. Now your your urbanized area. I only do the counts for the annual reports uh, for the main DEP on the program. So the infrastructure that you have in your urbanized area, which is pretty much just the, the core downtown area and a little bit that's adjacent to South Berwick, uh, you have basically 14 outfalls. It's a nice big hill and almost all of them go down to the Salmon Falls River. Um, 175 catch basins and drain manholes, three and a, almost three and a half miles of storm drain pipe, three and a half miles of ditches and 183 culverts and your public works department is maintaining all of that like that's their that's part of their job so that's what all the inspections are being done on and those numbers change a little bit from year to year so my basic takeaway messages are um, the stormwater program 
it impacts the town, almost all of the town operations. And um, although it might seem costly at first, um, protecting water quality is much less expensive than correcting an impairment. Estimates that I have seen recently are that for an acre of developed land, it can cost you fifty to $250,000 to correct an impairment per acre of developed land. And that's to install new, you know, or retrofit that site for new stormwater quality treatment systems. So protecting is less expensive. Um, and then I do, uh, the stormwater program, one of the designs that we have is to promote a more timely maintenance to avoid some of the deferred maintenance, which can be much more expensive. So where does the state step in here that, you know, um, where their, where's their responsibility lay with what, where their roads drain and where they, if you take 236 from Berwick to South Berwick, uh, there's got to be six outfalls in there. Yes. They, they do nothing but yes. let it go. And they, where, who's holding their feet to the fire to straighten that out? I've had plenty of arguments with them about it, but to no avail. They have a stormwater permit just like the town does. The main DOT has a stormwater permit and the main turnpike authority also yeah. hold permits uh, university of maine a, holds a, a storm a permit. statewide permit but i agree it's a no it's yeah it's a it's a general permit like yours is and they have to do the same six minimum control measures but they don't we take route 236 there's not one control measure done out there no t stormwater quality treatment yeah i don't know why I am done with my slideshow. Any <laughs> questions or? Can you have um, Lisa come up? Excuse me. Yeah, both of our hats are there. There we go. There. Thank you. Turn that light on, no? Thank you, Christy. Um, is uh, any any other questions for Christy? Is, um, I just have one for my own curiosity. Is you know you said you had, you had the list of our uh, infrastructure with the uh, fourteen outfalls and all that. Do you have that on a map that we can see? It is on a map. I was gonna bring I was gonna bring the map in. I know that um, James has a map okay. printed in his office for um, so that he and Jen can reference it, and then Carly. We did a full set of blow-up maps for the public works, and she's going to have them. Um, it's like a it's like a 100 scale, and uh -huh. they, like fill the whole wall. So and they're all with aerials in the background, so they have. Yeah, those. I, I didn't realize we had that many outfalls. You know, that that the, surprised me. You know, yeah. the, really? the ditches, the ditches, and, oh, and all that. I I, yeah. I knew we had quite a few, but 14 was quite. 14 a is not very many outfalls either. There are communities. I live in Cape Elizabeth. And they have over 150 outfalls because it's a little system that discharges to a little one. Right. You guys are a nice, nice kind of almost a bowl right. that, that um, everything can discharge out through just a few. So that'll help keep your costs down on monitoring. Any further questions? You will have to incur <coughs> quite an expense when we do the Molten Street, which is not this coming year, but the year after. So on your hat. Yeah. Gee, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Christy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is, um, is if there's no objection, I'm going to take things a little out of uh, uh, order here. Is uh, we'll, uh, I'd like to do under the new business, the approval of the budget transfers, so uh, Lisa can come up and uh, do her thing and we can get her out of here. Okay, so in fiscal 2019, there were four departments that were overspent, and with and the auditors are here this week, and we would like to get money transferred from departments that have um, a surplus to the over expenditures. So um, I will just round up so that this makes this easier. For the town admi administration, the, it was in the it was overspent by twenty six thousand five hundred and seventeen dollars. We can move that from the general government fund. Um, in assessing, there was five thousand six hundred ninety dollars overspent, and we can move that from planning. 
um, in town hall there was 13,296 overspent and we can move that from planning and police was overspent by $5,944 and we can move that from fire. So we need to. Could you give us the, the, the first one again? Yep, it's, um, it would be from, ta from general government to town administration, $26,517. Right. Have we had to do this before, Steve? We I don't do this every year. I don't well, recall that. We, we, we changed the policy changed the a policy. few years back. Oh, okay, yeah. And before we couldn't do it, we, we the town warrant we voted on, yes. wasn't it? You've done it since I've been here. Okay. Yeah. Every year. Yeah, we, we, we changed it you know, a little while back. I just don't remember Maureen getting up there, but maybe she did it in a different way. Maybe she didn't get up. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't coming that. before you, but. I remember. I've asked our new finance person to come that's before you. <laughs> yeah, that's thank you. Right. Comes from a good source. Yeah. Um, is you know is what for, for two of the the money's coming from planning is uh, what is it about planning that we didn't spend <coughs> that we had budgeted for? I think we had anticipated when we started it was uh, we were splitting uh, one the code enforcement officer position with public works, yeah. and uh, we that person uh, was uh, cut loose. So we, uh, it was different. It, it wasn't under part time; it was considered full time. So now, why are we going over budget? Is that do we? Do the department heads know that we, what their budget is, and if they do over the budget, do they come to you and say, "Oh, oh we over the budget"? Or we we know when things are going to go over budget. Okay. Um, if you want an explanation, I can tell you each one. Um, for the administration uh, overage. Uh, came because my contract was uh, changed uh, in August after, after the, the budget week. had been put in place, so the funding had not been approved for that. So you're over there. Um, we had, in between Maureen and Jack, um, I gave uh, Lisa a stipend because she was doing quite a bit of the work. Um, so that was not anticipated. So uh, that's where that funding uh, overage came from. Um, for uh, the police, it was just a, we... Five grand. Huh? Five yeah, grand. that was a payroll thing. Uh, we... Yeah, um, I, I journaled back the last payroll, which would, would have been, um, it was actually paid on July 2nd, and, but ended on June 30th. So I, I journaled all the, pay, the entire payroll back to fiscal year, June 30, 2019. And um, it w it created in police. It created the overage. It didn't in any other department, though. And the, the assessing overage was we re was part of the reval. There was an awful lot more materials and letters and things that went out that just yeah. drove it over. Um, so it, things happen. Thank you. And the town hall was the repairs to the oh, heating yeah. and the town cleanup. hall. Was, <laughs> how many, how many Do rainwater we need to talk leaks? About that? Yeah. How many leaks we had from? Heating system. Every time we turn the heating system on. Yeah. <laughs> so that, when I pushed real hard to get this system fixed. <laughs> so, which they've done. But, so you have to approve those transfers. Um, we do it as a blanket? Or yeah, yeah, I, I think, think you, so. Uh, you want to do it individually? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't have a list of them. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's do one so, at a time. So let's do the first one. <laughs> so the first one would be from general government to town administration, $26,517. So moved. I'll second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? The next one is from planning to assessing for $5,690. So moved. Checking it. Any discussion? Oh. All those in favor? The third is from planning to town hall, $13,296. So moved. Checking it. Any discussion? All those in favor? I guess I should ask if these departments are aware that the funds are being Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is just to oh, close out the year, yeah, so it's, it's not coming sure. out of the current budget. <laughs> All right. It would um, be a big surprise to them yeah. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
The, the last one is from fire to police for $5,944. So moved. Second. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just to say, since I've been here, most departments have uh, been either usually under budget. Yeah, I was going to say this is the first time I remember it like this. Yeah. You know. I haven't seen the police ever over budget until this uh, past year. And with the building expenses, it's just uh, infrastructure falling apart. You know, so. All right, we'll go back to our regular order. It is unfinished business, the purchase and policy revisions. Yeah, you had put that on hold when I was gone. So right. um, any questions? I think we just upped the amounts. Yes. Yeah. Tab nine. Tab nine. Mm -hmm. um, the changes I made here was I'm the purchasing agency, but in my absence, I, I think it's appropriate that the finance director act as in my absence if there's a, something that has to be done uh, where you need me Agreed. to make a decision. Um, and. Uh, the other one was the department had must submit a written request known as a purchase requisition to the purchasing agent. Um, that uh, is something that has not been the practice here, I and mean, both Lisa and I think it should be. Mm -hmm. So we have a, a purchase requisition. Uh, and, and then all purchases totaling 10,001 or more shall be made through the formal bid process. I think at the time it was five thousand. Five thousand more to yeah. yeah. So it's ten now, right? The new one's ten. 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 The new ten one's ten. ten. If we approve yeah. it. If we yeah. approve this. Yeah. 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 Um, and then uh, uh, under uh, procedures for informal bidding, oral quotes will not be accepted. All quotes must be received on paper or electronically and signed. No more word of mouth. It has to be something that we can put our hands on. Have we had a problem with that in the past? We haven't, but I just, I just want it for you. So we have a record of it. Well, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. smart business. I just, I yeah. just. It just makes sense that we should do it that way. And I think our auditors would probably, and there's a question, uh, they'd like to see. I, th I think we came close at one point in time when it came to the uh, ambulance service. Right. You know, we got real close to being uh, where we shouldn't be, so I think yeah. this is uh, okay. Yeah, very yeah. close. Yeah. <laughs> that was just before our time. <laughs> so um, those are the only changes. But any other questions for the town manager? None. I would move that we accept the policy directive purchasing uh, with the recommended changes as presented. Second. Any discussion? No. No lose a favor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, brings us to the town manager's report. Good night, Lisa. Good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, as Lisa had said, the auditors are in the building. They'll be here for the rest of the week. Uh, they are usually behind closed doors, and we've got them running up and down to the third floor with questions. <laughs> Most of it's questions and requests are being done through email, but uh, it's a busy time for the finance office. Um, we had a fire station meeting update today. Um, it, uh, just uh, We have a new project manager on site, um, along with uh, a new superintendent on site. Uh, they've dug uh, the hole for the apparatus bay. In doing so, they uncovered um, some hides, which had all been put aside to one area uh, and covered so the water doesn't get down through there. And the DEP, they've taken, uh, Criteria has taken samples and uh, at the request of the DEP. And once we get the results back, we're hoping that we don't have to take it off site. We can just bury it again and control that. So uh, it's keeping them busy. <coughs> Paving is done. Um, there's still shoulders haven't been done up on Pine Hill. It was calling to the contractor to get that taken care of. Um, also, we met last week with the water department 
and the sewer department uh, with their engineer Val from Underwood Engineering and our uh, engineer from Tish Bond in working on the water quality issues that we have um, and hoping we can discharge some of the stuff that's uh, in our recycling bag to get that out of the system completely. And uh, I will be coming back with some recommendations for upgrades uh, once Amanda has a chance to put it all together. It's time, I think, that we really have to address that with the water department and, and get that plant on track. So, um, but there's some temporary or issues that they can solve with uh, if we can dump some of this stuff into uh, the sewer system. But uh, Mike Tibbetts, who's their operator, is, uh, he's a good operator and he's very specific about what he'll take and what he won't take. So they have some work to go. They're still uh, working on that and hopefully uh, cleaning up some of the issues that they've had. But it's an ongoing discussion and I have my finger in it. So I will keep you up to date on that. Um, otherwise, the heating guys are here today. Uh, they started on the boiler system. They're replacing the pipes. Uh, and getting that all set and then they'll convert to a water system versus a steam. The heat pumps uh, have all been in, put in and operating. They're very quiet, you don't even hear them. And uh, keeping the upper floors warm and, and the uh, recreation office. So I, they did that right during hours and a lot of drilling and a lot of noise, but they did a nice job. And that's all I have. Any questions for anything else? Are we still going to be working on the uh, rec field parking lot this fall? Or I know we got no. delayed because the plan Yeah, we, we just missed the, the deadline to get any work done on it and get something planted. Yep. So they're going to come back at it in the spring. Okay. Um, should be fine. So we're just going to leave that alone then? We're going to leave that alone for now. <laughs> All right. Do um, you have anything you want to add about the... Uh, Great Falls and prime tanning? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, they had a meeting here. Uh, Great Falls is now the proud owner of the prime site. It's very exciting for us and all of the people who have been involved in that project. Um, it's been since 2012. Uh, it's been worked on, so it's a lot of energy from a lot of people. Uh, Great Falls, uh, if anybody goes to their website, they can see some of the projects that they work on. Uh, they've done some great work in the town of Gorham where their office is and they live. Um, and they seem to be a really good fit for what we want here. So they held a meeting last uh, Wednesday. Uh, we had close to 100 people attend. It lasted for almost two hours. Uh, I think they got a very good reception from the public and a lot of good questions. And they are coming back in December for another uh, meet and greet. And questions and hopefully they'll have some things to show. Um, we are talk. James and I are back and forth with uh, Julie Smith who's the project manager and business development person for them, daughter who she was here that night. Uh, she's talking to all the people that we put her in touch with um, and I think that uh, once that starts you're gonna see it fill up pretty quickly and they don't seem to want to waste any time. They want, you know, they've got a big investment there they've made and they want to get it off the ground and, um, and they, they're working closely with us on, on the whole thing, which is really quite nice. Um, a breath Kahai of fresh air. Yeah. What's that? A breath of fresh air. A breath of fresh air. Mr. Kahaya still owns the Blue Sort building. That's too bad. Oh, he will. Um, once we transfer it and the cleanup's done, it's, they should be done in the next couple of weeks and we can probably make that transfer by December. Uh, Why would we want to do that? Why don't we just keep it? Um, he's got somebody who wants to lease the building. And we don't want that kind of person in there. Well, I, we don't have a say. Straight that out. He, he has the right by contract that you signed yeah, I know. to take ownership of when he requests it. So once the cleanup is done, he, I talked to his lawyer at the closing, and he will exercise that right. So down the road, maybe he'll sell it. I don't know. But I'm just glad that this property here has changed hands. Oh yeah, well, it's good thing. as everybody is. So, but it's an exciting time and a lot of uh, people's wishes and hopes. I think you'll you'll see come to fruition quickly. I'm hoping. So, 
Anything else you want to add? Yeah. It, it, you know, it, 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 <laughs> I'm excited. It, um, it, uh, the Smiths seem like a, a good fit with the town. Uh, they um, listened to all the questions that were brought up and you know, answered truthfully. Is uh, when they were asked about is is what they're going to do there. Is they said that you know they don't have a firm plan yet, but you know they want to work with the town. Is you know they we it was asked about the uh, tearing down the existing buildings that uh, left there, and you know John said that John Smith said that you no, know, as we know, it costs a lot of money to tear buildings down, and uh, so they might be you know reused as is, but. Is I, I I'm very excited for what's going to go on, and yeah. uh, I think that Berwick's been waiting a long time for this kind of you know good news. So. Yeah, we we had a uh, high tech company out of California, a young man from Bur North Berwick, a Harvard grad, has been talking about an invention that he had, and I got a copy on an email that he has already reached out to the Smiths, and, really? and they responded right away. Good. So. Um, I'm waiting to he hear that Harry Wesson from Nature's Way had reached out. But I did send him a love message, and he has been no response yet. But I'm hoping that will intrigue him as well. But, um, so there's a lot of interest, a lot of interest. That's good. And now they get somebody that will respond to them. Well, as somebody you no know, said to me, you know, they say, you know, is we've had had these promises before, but the difference is, is that Mark Cahaya didn't need to make money on what he had over there. He could use it as a write-off. Whereas Great Falls Construction, they need to make money. You know, they, they can't sit on their investment. They need to make money. So they're going to be in a hurry to do something and start recouping that. Yep. So I, I feel really good about it. So Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Is uh, Selectman's Communications is uh, other than another letter from Comcast. Expansion of eligibility for program for low qualified low income households is uh, is it said that if you want some information is uh, to contact them at their Internet Essentials website on Comcast. Account payable. <coughs> we have. Uh, Payroll warrant 2018 from October 31st, 2019, for the amount of $59,158.48. Uh, accounts payable warrant 2019 from November 7th, 2019, for the amount of $222,654.05. There's a water warrant. 019 for November 7th, 2019, for the amount of $11,749.89. And the payroll warrant, 2019 for November 7th, 2019, for the amount of $52,968.16. Could you repeat the, the first, first one. payroll warrant? The first payroll one. Did I mess that one up? Well, I'm not sure. If Pay, you payroll 2018 Penny. from October 31st, 2019, for the amount of $59,158.47. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You said 48 <laughs> initially. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> is I make a motion that we uh, pay our bills. A second. All those in favor? Thank you. And back to new business is uh, town street light street light replacement with <coughs> LEDs. Yes, we uh, were approved at the uh, voting to be able to enter into a lease uh, purchase agreement uh, for whoever we chose to replace the street lights, uh, and we had uh, Tenco, uh, which is a uh, firm out of. California and Texas, who have been submitting and speaking to me. Um, their net project cost was $148,499. And then uh, 
we uh, had Affinity, which is local over in Dover, I think was where they are. Yep. Um, and for the same project, um, the total cost was, um, hold on one second. 100, well, there's two different ones, 90, 71, oh, total project cost, 96,426. And uh, the other was 124,994. So Affinity um, is definitely, uh, would be my recommendation. They're local. Um, they're, um, they gave us a presentation at um, one of the Tri-Town meetings we had. That's a local company, Affinity? Yeah, Affinity. They're, they're doing quite a bit of work. Tenco is also doing quite a bit of work in the state, but not anywhere near what uh, they are. And their prices are higher. But, um, um, so how long is it going to take them to do it, and when will they do it? Well, we've got to get on the, in the queue, um, and they're pretty busy. But I, once I know that they're going to do it, they told me that they'd let, give us a time frame. They, they, they'd said when we when we talked to them before affinity that is once once they start the project it'd take about a week to replace all the lights That's in it, town. a week yep. yeah now yeah. now what happens uh, is there going to be a different kind of shading of the light is it going to be more brighter or lighter or it, is it, there different hues we can do or something like that is, uh, the affinity lighting is the affinity they're, they're based out of Dover New Hampshire they're, they're at the Washington Mills there. Yep, yep. Um, is uh, they use all local people to they, they assemble everything right there veterans all veteran mostly veterans um, but is when they gave the presentation they talked about how they can tune the lights to a specific area so that once the lights are up they can tune the oh I don't remember the the shade, the, the shade, right? The brightness and the huh? blues and yellows and reds. Oh, no kidding. He said that you no, know, they can come back and and fine tune that. Say they put in a light and it, you know some one of the neighbors finds it you know too bright, too bright or not bright enough. Right, mm -hmm. is they can come by and, and retune it. Really, is, yeah, that's uh, good. So, is um you know the the affinity is uh, like I said they're, they're local. They've done a lot of work throughout the state of Maine. Um, they did Augusta and uh, you know places like that. They were doing Augusta when we talked to them actually at the time, and um, you know I, w I was impressed by uh, you know the whole company. Every, anybody that's had work done by them are very happy with it. It's so good. that would be my recommendation. Oh yeah, right yeah. in the magazine. Huh? Yeah. I think you each got a copy <coughs> of there. Well, we got a copy of that, and they're also yeah. in the in the this main town and city yeah. yep. the advertisement in there as well. So I was pretty impressed with them as well. I gave them a presentation over at uh, the high school. Yeah. Yeah. And they're holding their price. This was in April, so they're yep. hold, they, they hold their price. they hold their price. Absolutely. We were talking at one point about uh, the possibility of them also doing the entire town hall as well. Yeah, uh, yes, and we put enough money in there to do that as well. Mm -hmm. But we're going to have our electrician do the work. Uh, it's less, hopefully, at a less price. Yeah. So it is, is, is for, as far as doing the municipal buildings, is they supply, they, they come and do the study and figure out what needed, but they hire a local electrician to actually do the work. Yeah. It's like doing the street lights. They work with uh, cuts, is it? Electrical? Yeah, is, out of a bigger company. Right, that, that is, is certified by CMP to do all their work. So, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, they you know, and, and they they you know Affinity figures that the annual savings are thirty one thousand dollars. So you know, if we were to go with their their ninety six thousand dollar project, is a little over three years, just over three years would you know would pay for itself in energy efficiency. Yeah. So that's substantial. So I would uh, move that we uh, award. The lighting project in the amount of ninety-six thousand four hundred and twenty-six dollars to Affinity. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Can't wait to see that happen too. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so let's see, did we, uh, the December 24th meeting. Canceled. Well, obviously, it's just before Christmas. <laughs> is, um, is I believe we canceled it last year also. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll just need to make sure I get three signatures on the warrant. The new finance director is pretty, pretty tough about making sure we have it signed before she sends Anything out any out, checks. Yeah. Which well, is good. I'm if I'm not wrong, we all kind of live in town, so we can make a stop off. Yeah, and, and thank you. Me. I appreciate that. <laughs> a little uh, more notice I also think better. that we should probably yeah. cancel it. There's we'll no more notice. There's no more convenient time to put it in place. A week later is you know New Year's Eve, and yeah. yep. nobody wants to be here. At, you know, no. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah we don't want to be here anyways. But. Yeah. The, the uh, <laughs> definitely the. The contractors want to make sure they get paid, so yeah. <laughs> they'll have it here the first of every month. Yeah. So. so, motion to cancel the December twenty fourth board of selectmen meeting. Second. All those in favor? I'm not even going to ask for a discussion. <laughs> and then the change of the cost recovery fee schedule, addition yeah. of timber harvest fee of a hundred dollars. Yeah. We, it was fifty dollars. They did a survey around what everybody else is charging. It's a hundred bucks most communities, and they thought we should raise it. So I said I'd bring it to the board. Um, it's up to you. You have control over increasing or decreasing fees. So. so Do we have a lot of people paying the fee now? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's going to the same thing. I don't. I don't think so. I, I don't know how much. Uh, how many people come in to do it? To be honest with you. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll say it right up front is five years ago, my family had our land harvested and we had to get a permit from the state, but I don't ever remember having to get a permit from the town for the harvest. And when I talked to our forester, he said, I, I, I have a hard time remembering exactly, like I said, five years ago, is that is because of the type of harvesting that was being done, I didn't have to pay that fee. So okay. I'm not sure when the fee applies or doesn't. I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to have to talk to the code no. and get a, a clearer picture. Yeah. Well, they just harvested 20 acres by my office across the street. Right, yeah. Did they come in to get a permit? I bet you not even a state permit on that. Yeah. I don't know. It's Maloney. Yeah, so I, I, I don't know. Maloney? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> we will check it. <laughs> check it out, if you would. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right, now. So what are you going to do? Are we going to vote for the fee or not? Uh, we're going to table, we'll table it. Table it for now. Yeah. And uh, we'll get some more information. Yep. So that brings us to quick claim deeds and abatement. Yeah, quick claim deed, this one on Two Moose Lane is, is just it's, <coughs> it's a contract pay for back taxes that were paid. Um, so it's just. So they, they fulfilled their they obligation? They fulfilled their obligation. And we only have one more contract hanging out there, so that will clean up all of that. Well, I would move we accept the uh, municipal quick claim deed without covenants for map R034, lot 020. I'll second it. Any discussion? No. All those in favor? Thank you. Now we get to the nitty gritty of it. <laughs> the abatements and supplementals. We thank Paul for being here. Yeah, 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 thank you, you, Paul. You're very welcome. And thank you for waiting. Very welcome. Um, you want me to do it one at a time? Yes, Just approve one at a time. Okay. Yes. All right. So the first one is tax map R3342-2 for Riverbend Drive. Uh, this is a um, newly built single family home on 1.3 acres, 38 acres. Um, the, uh, we went out to uh, inspect the property and found that the um, quality of the dwelling seems similar to the others in the area, but there was some abnormal uh, obsolescence. With we, In order to get to the bathroom, you had to walk through the master bedroom. There was no other bathroom available. Mm -hmm. So because of that reason, we felt there was an adjustment needed. We recommend that an abatement be granted in the amount of uh, $59.60 reducing the assessed value by $3,400 from 249, 249,000 to 245,600. Is, is this a, 
a single bedroom home? Or? It was a one bedroom home, and that's the only bathroom is going through the master bedroom. So that new home? It's brand new. And they built it that way. Yep. Yeah, it just uh, you know it's what they wanted, but I'm sure <laughs> it would affect the you know the saleability of it. Or in order to this value is based on what it would cost to create another entrance, basically, so that you wouldn't have to do that. It's a cost to cure. I mean, when I was living in Portland and I had an apartment where the bathroom was in through the bedroom, it was like that was the worst thing in the world to me. It's like I don't, I don't want people going through my bedroom to get to my bathroom. Right. That's the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So I uh, move we accept the town assessor's recommendation uh, for the abatement uh, in the amount of $59.60 for tax map R033 TAC42 TAC2 as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. Next one is R11, lot 5-5, 354 Hubbard Road. Uh, this is a single-family dwelling that has various uh, outbuildings situated on 9.13 acres. Again, we went out and inspected the property um, and corrected some, some building features that were incorrect. Uh, we also um, did some adjustment on the land because of, there was a significant amount of wetlands on the property that we didn't account for originally. Um, so therefore, we're recommending an abatement in the amount of $191.08, reducing the assessed value by $10,900 from $277,009 to $267,000. I move to accept the town assessor's recommendation. I second it. All those in favor? Thank you. Okay, this one is R1, lot 21. It's uh, 426, 428 Hubbard Road. Uh, the subject property is on uh, is 1.78 acres with two single family dwellings, one a raised ranch style dwelling and the other one uh, that's an average quality. The other one is a ranch style dwelling that was built in 1948 and is uh, in very poor condition. Um, We've been out there. We went out there twice, in fact. The uh, first time we went out, we inspected it. We weren't able to get into the property. Um, so we went back out with the owner. The second time, he took us through the property. There was a significant amount of mold. Uh, he doesn't feel that there's a value there, but there is a value because the structure as a whole is, is fine, and it also enables him to rebuild if something happened to that property. Does he live in it? He lives in the, in the raised ranch style home. This one here is not? It's nothing. Lived. There's not even storage in there. There was all kinds of feces from animals that have gotten in there. The whole place is filled with mold, and it was even it's kind of scary to go in to the property. Um, so we're recommending that the um, an abatement be granted in the amount of $113.95, reducing the assessed value by $6,500 from 300500 to 294000 uh, dollars. So moved. Second it. There's no further discussion. All those in favor? Thank you. I mean, don't we have any way of telling him he's got to tear it down or clean it up? I mean, it doesn't town have any. No. Uh, well, it's private property. I mean, he. Uh, it's not a rental. He's not, not even not using it for storage. I mean, it's not occupied. It's not. If you drove by it, you it. wouldn't know it. It's not in dis. You know, the outside looks fine. Average condition, but it looks fine, like so a if ranch. If there's no one living at it, then there's no, no hazard. Then, if there was, I would think there'd be a problem. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. You, I mean, the floors were so spongy, you you felt like you were going to fall through. It was just really, really bad, deplorable condition. But he doesn't want to tear it down because he wants that ability to be able to rebuild right on that site if he needed to. Um. Okay, so this one here is a uh, personal property abatement. It's account number 808. It's for the York Hospital on Ford Dana Drive. Uh, Wells Fargo Financial Leasing leases equipment to various businesses uh, in nonprofit organizations in Berwick, which total $109,560,000 in assessed value. Uh, the company filed a personal property declaration in a business equipment tax exemption application with the assessing office. The Betty application was reviewed and processed 
the copiers that were leased to the York Hospital located at Fort Dana Drive were listed on that application that was accepted and in fact they are not taxable because that's a tax exempt property and it specifically says in the statute that hospitals are exempt from taxation um, so as a result um, we overcharged the company by uh, $109.28 so we're looking to reduce that personal property value um, by $6,234 for that one location. They have other, other items in the town, but that one location should be exempt. <laughs> it's hard. I, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's <laughs> That's a hard one. Yeah. Second. Uh, no further discussion. All those in favor. All right. Uh, the next one, one is. One question. Yep. Yep. On, the, on the pages, uh, underneath tax year, it says assessment. And that assessment is what it currently is. But then on this other abatement, it's the, on the Wells Fargo one, it's the amount that you're reducing it to? or Yeah, they, they well, we just made a statement that in the town, they they own one hundred nine thousand dollars worth of property. Yeah, but to the hospital account, which they have separately. Okay. They lease six thousand. It's a the value is six thousand two hundred and thirty four dollars. Okay, and you're reducing and it reducing to zero. that to zero because it's exempt. Got it by okay. statute. Um, next one is R thirty three lot forty two dash eight one Riverbend Drive. Uh, this is a, a single-family dwelling that's under construction, situated on 1.43-acre lot. Uh, we uh, were build we were valuing them as two building lots. So instead of having a, the first land line as being 77,300, we had two lines at 77,300. So we overassessed them by by that amount. So we're looking to abate them uh, $1,355.07 and reducing the assessed value by $77,300. So moved. Second it. Right. Any further discussion? All those in favor? <clears throat> All right. We're um, going to get a little just, money back here. Yeah. Is, uh, the, the, just one question. The, the Riverbend Drive, where is that located? Is that the one off of Worcester Road? Is not near drive. the river? I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'd have to look at the map. I, I, yeah. don't, <laughs> I don't remember off the top of my head. I was, I was trying to figure it out. It, it might be the one down on the end of it's Worcester a new, Road. Uh, it's a new develop, new street. Right. Yeah. It's the one where they started and the guy went broke and the, yeah. the, the, one of the lenders had to take over. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, yeah, there's no river there, but... Yeah, I know, but I think that, I, I believe that's yeah, the I name think, of the... I think you're right. Cause so, yeah, River yeah. Bend. Uh, <clears throat> it's the company. Yeah. <clears throat> BC Lumber. Yeah. Okay, so this one here was a um, one that we accidentally admitted. It's a supplemental assessment uh, for the um, main RSA number one Inc. Uh, it's a the subject property is a business where they sell tower equipment. The personal property account was inadvertently classified as inactive. Um, as a result, was admitted from the commitment. The total assessed value was twenty two thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. So we're looking to supplement them uh, for three hundred ninety-one dollars and eighty cents. So moved. Second. Any further okay. discussion? I think that's uh, all, all I have. Favor. Yep. I I do have a few more, so I'm just uh, we're just writing them up now, and you know, going out and doing the inspection. So I expect in the next month or so. Um, you know, we'll probably have a few more. Supple and this is supplementals or abatements? Abatements. Supplementals. Do we appraise all CMPs lines and and um, yes, they send they send yes they send us every year they send us a declaration. I think it went up um, about a half a million dollars this year. Oh, it doesn't surprise me. They've done yeah. a lot of work in town. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they um, they send us a declaration of all the substations. All the poles, conduits, um, any uh, tran you know, any any lines that they uh, that they have, and all the land as well, all the vacant land they own. Yep. 
Thank you, Paul. Right. Thank you, Paul. Yep. Thank, Thank you, Paul. 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 Is a second public comment. We have no public here. Um, we do have an executive session. We do. Yeah, we do. Yep. Is uh, but we uh, we have any other business and non agenda items first? No. no. I'm going to make a motion that we enter executive session under Title One, Subsection Four Hundred Five Six D for the discussion of labor contracts. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Thanks for staying here. And I'll get everything else for you. Thank you. I don't think there's going to be any oh. decisions oh. made. Okay. Just, 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 be, be, no decisions will be being made. Recommendations <laughs> made. <laughs> yeah. Is, uh, so we'll be coming back in, but we'll be finishing our official business right now.